The sources for this shiur can be found in Torah, T-O-R-A.txt, .co.il. As we get closer to Shavuot, the question is, what exactly happened on Shavuot? Why do we celebrate it? We all know, or we all say, that on Shavuot we got the Torah. But the question is, is that true? Did that really happen on Shavuot? And if not, so what did happen on that day? The Gemara in Shabbat, page P. 87, discusses what date, on what date did Am Yisrael get the Torah? Was it the 6th of Sivan or the 7th of Sivan? We won't go into this discussion. What is interesting, the days in the week that Am Yisrael went out of Egypt and got the Torah. The Gemara says, that's in Daf Pichet. Nisan Shabu Yatsu Yisrael Mimitzayim Be'arba'a Asar Shachtu Pischem Ube'chamisha Asar Yatsu Ve'la'erev Laku Bechorot Ve'oto Yom Chamishi B'Shabbat Haya When I'm Yisrael went out of Egypt that day, that day was a Thursday Thursday, let's remember that day A few lines beforehand the Gemara says that the day we got the Shabbat, we got the Torah with Shabbat. And the Gemara learns it from the word Zachor, Zachor. It says Zachor at Yom Shabbat Yikadesho in Shabbat. And Moshe says to Am Yisrael, Vayamu Moshe el Ha'am Zachor et Hayom Hazeh. Both days, also getting the Torah and also Shabbat, has the word Zachor, remember, in it. And the Gemara understands from here that we got the Torah on Shabbat. Shavuot comes after 49 days of counting Sirat HaOmer. We have the first day of Pesach, then the second day we start counting Sirat HaOmer. We count 49 days, after 49 we get to Shavuot. Shavuot is the 50th day. But if we look at the days that Am Yisrael went out of Egypt and then got the Torah, we see that actually there's 51 days. Not, four, not 50, 51. Am Yisrael went out of Egypt on Thursday. Remember, Thursday. 49 days is 7 weeks. That, that brings us to the next Thursday. Then to Saturday, to Shabbat, we have 2 more days. There's one day here added. Where did that day come from? And why don't we celebrate Shavuot on the 51st day? This question was answered by many rabbis. Here we'll give something, an explanation, which suits the Maharal and gives us a special meaning to Shavuot, Torah Shebe'al Peh, and Am Yisrael. The Gemara in the same place tells that Moshe added one more day from his mind. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him, be ready for the third day, and Moshe decided to have three whole days, not two and a half, three whole, day, three whole days, so actually added one day. God told him, be ready for the third day, today, tomorrow, and the next day, and Moshe said we have to have three days to get ready for Shavuot. So he actually added one day, and he postponed getting the Torah. And the Gemara says that, and how, how do we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu agreed with Moshe? Very simple. The fact that we didn't get to the Torah on the 50th day after going out of Egypt shows that God, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, agreed with Moshe and to adding that day. So actually on the 50th day, we have here something special. We should have got the Torah, but because of Moshe, Moshe's decision and what he decided how the nation should get prepared, we actually didn't get the Torah. That actually might bring us to an idea that might, sound, might sound strange first, but when we continue learning we'll see how real it is that what we celebrate on Shavuot actually is not getting the Torah or not getting the Torah on that day. The fact that the Kadosh Baruch Hu agreed to Moshe shows us the power of Torah Shabbat, the power 
we, the Jewish nation, have, our sages have, to explain the Torah. We'll give an example, an Amora called Rava, says in Masechet Makot, I'm going to read it and translate it. Amar Rava, Kama tipshai shar inshei dekamei ikamei sefer Torah velokaimei mikamei gabra Rava. Rava says, how stupid or fool are those people who stand up before sefer Torah but don't stand up because before the rabbis. And why is that? He continues. The ilu besefer Torah ktiv arbaim yakenu ve'atu rabbanam batzu chala. As a punishment, some of the punishments are called makot, a certain way of hitting the person. The Torah it says, Be'arba'im yakinu be'mispar, the maximum is 40. Came the sages and said, the maximum is 39. They learned it in some way, but they learned, in the way they learned it, they actually changed the simple meaning of the Torah. So actually, those sages, or our sages, have the power to understand the Torah in a different way from the simplest way and actually behaving like that. And as we saw with Moshe, God agrees with them. We can bring many other examples to the fact that we have, with us as a nation, we have the ability to understand the Torah and to decide how the Torah should be explained in our world and God agrees with us. One famous example is a discussion between the sages, Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Elazar. There was a very strong discussion, a very hard argument, even we can call it. And one of the rabbis, Rabbi Elazar, tried to do miracles to show that he is right. And Rabbi Yeshua said, You can't bring proof for miracles. And then he said, If I'm right, a bat call, a voice will say that I'm right. And the voice actually said that he is right. And then came Rabbi Yeshua, and the sages agreed with him. We, the Torah is not in the sky, in heaven. The Torah is here. We don't, when we can't come to be poskin halacha, we don't listen to voices coming from heaven. We listen to what we decide here. So that's another proof, or another example, for the power that God gave the Jewish nation gave us the Torah, but to give us the power to decide how to interpret it. Our sages give an allegory to the to this. A thing of a king who has one daughter and she grew and it's a time for her to get married and she got married to the person she loves. Then comes the father, the, ki the king, and says I miss my daughter very much. I can't take her away from you because you married her. On the other hand, I can't leave you here. You, you are the bride, you are the groom. Go, you, go to live your life. I can't keep you here. So, you know what? Do for me one favor. Wherever you go, wherever country you live, wherever con whichever country you, you rule, Build a small house for me next to your palace. So I, the big king, when I come to visit, visit you, I'll have way to live. And this allegory, the king, the big king, is the Kadosh Baruch Hu. The bride is obviously the Torah, and the groom are us. And God tells us, I gave you the Torah, I can't take it away from you. Do for me one thing. Build a small house for me, maybe build Beit HaMikdash, I'll come to visit you. You can see here the same idea. God comes to us. He gave us the power. He gave us the ability to rule the world in His ways. And then He will come down to us. But these examples show us what we got on Shavuot. On Shavuot what happened is we were supposed to get the Torah. Torah Shebikhtav, the written Torah, the written Bible. But actually what we got is the power, the Torah Shebikhtav, the power to understand Torah Shebikhtav, the power to interpret it. We got Torah Shebikhtav. 
Ashkara will see soon that Torah Shabbat Pei connects to relate to Am Yisrael in a very special way and also relates to the night, which might explain why on Shavuot we stay up all night and learn. The Midrash in Parashat al Chuma says, on the Pasuk, Vayhi Sham 40 Yom and 40 Laila. Moshe was up in Har Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, from the fact that it says 40 days and nights, usually you just say 40 days, why do you say nights? The Midrash understands that there was some sort of night when Moshe was there. So when Moshe was up in Har Sinai, in Mount Sinai, he had a day and he had, he had a night. And the Midrash asks, how could there be night or dark with God? Nehorai Meishaya, as the Midrash says, there's light with him all the time. So how could there be night in Har Sinai? And the Midrash answers, when God taught Moshe Mikra, which means Torah Shebikhtar, the written Torah, Moshe knew it was day. When he taught him in Mishnayot, what we call Torah Shebaal Peh, Moshe knew it's night. So you can see that Torah Shebaal Peh relates to the night. The Maharal in Tiferet Israel explains that night relates more to people. When you talk about God and people, so the day relates to God. He has all the power to create things in the world, like we create things in the day. And the night time is a time for people. That's a time where, as if God, as if God steps aside and gives the, pe- give the people the, the time to light candles themselves, light their own fire, not rely on the big sun which comes from God. That's a time which relates more to people. That ex- explains why Moshe learned on the night time to Rashi Peh. As we said, to Rashi Peh is something that how we interpret the written Bible. It's how we do it, something which relates to us. So obviously, this kind of Torah, which relates to us, will be given on a time which relates more to us. And that is the night time. Rav Kook, in Horta, in Horta Torah, talks about, a lot about the difference between Torah Shebel Peh and the difference between Torah Shebikhtav. Torah Shebikhtav, the written Bible, comes from outside of us towards us. God gives us the Tulukhot, He gives us the Torah, He gives, he gives, the, he gives us the written words. It comes from heaven to us, from God to us, from somewhere high, it comes down to us. Torah Shabbat is different. It comes from us towards God. It comes from how we understand, how we live the world, how we interpret the words, how we understand them, and it brings us towards God. Are we a sentence, although it might be hard language, as out of the language of Rav Kook, then we'll try to explain it. Torah Shebaal Peh, that's in the Torah Aleph Bet, Torah Shebaal Peh munachat be'etim ofiyah shel ha'umah, shematzai et birchata al-edea giluya shamaimi shel Torah Shebikhtav. We actually start from the end of the sentence, it's easier to understand. The Jewish nation, found its identity, maybe, from Torah Shebikhtav, which came from heaven, came from God, from out of us to us. And then, after we have that Torah Shebikhtav, the written Bible, the written, written words, comes Torah Shebikhtav, which comes from us. It's part of the nation. Torah Shebikhtav, the fact that this, this special nation, this special Jewish nation which God chose, he also gave us, he put in us as a nation, as obviously as a private people, part of that nation, he put in us the ability, it's like part of our nature, nature the ability of Torah Shabbat Peh, the ability to understand Torah Shabbat the ability to change it, to understand it in a way which suits us.
obviously only three are stages. It's really part of us. So in Shavuot, actually, what happened is we got a special thing which relates exactly to us as a nation. Any nation maybe could have gotten a Bible. When the Jewish nation came into the land of Israel, they took 12 big stones, translated the, the Torah, the Bible, to 70 languages, so all the other nations could learn and read the Torah. But one thing can't be moved or can't be given to a different nation. And that obviously what belongs to us as nature. That is the Torah Shebaal Peh. That is what God gave us just as being Jews. The other nations could maybe learn Torah Shebikhtav. She could learn Torah as an outsider. But they haven't got the ability to connect to it, to connect to God via the Torah. They haven't got the ability, obviously, to decide how the Torah will be interpreted. They haven't got the ability that Moshe had to decide today. We aren't going to get Torah. We're going to get it tomorrow. So when we come to Shavuot, we know that actually what we have on Shavuot is not just getting the Torah. The technical part of getting the Torah happened maybe one day afterwards. We got on Shavuot the Torah into ourselves. We got actually ourselves part of the Torah. Shavuot we made ourselves to be part of the Torah. We just didn't just get the Torah to be as an outsider. When we get to Shavuot, we look at the Torah as an insider, as someone who knows that he actually married the Torah. And when the father of that bride, when God will want to come and visit his daughter, when God will want to come and see the Torah, he'll check what his son, what us, how we interpret it. When we interpret the Torah, when we learn something, when we have an interesting idea about something, it's not just an idea. It's a way for us to connect to God. And God looks at that. He looks at his daughter and he's happy to see how the Torah is interpreted in special ways by his great nation. And that is Shavuot. And that is why we learn all night. Because we actually show on the night time, that's a time which belongs to Torah Shebalte. That's a time which belongs to us. And Shavuot is our special connection to Torah Shebalte. A special connection which only we have and happens on this coming day. Shavuot Sameach.